Over a million people visit this historic building in Greenfield Village, near Dearborn, Michigan. It's the Menlo Park Laboratory of Thomas Alva Edison, America's most famous inventor. Many years ago, in this laboratory, the electric light bulb was developed by Thomas Edison. The electric light was only one of the thousands of patents that came from the rich imagination of this man. Thomas Alva Edison. What were his beginnings? What kind of a boy was he? He was born in this small house in the town of Milan, Ohio, in the year 1847. By the time he was six years old, the boy Edison, called Al, was already showing signs of being different from other boys. He spent a lot of time just watching things. Daydreaming, the neighbors said. Some even thought he might not be very bright. This concerned his mother, Nancy. There were times, too, when she wondered about him, about his quiet, thoughtful ways. Al's father, Samuel Edison, owned a small business in the town of Milan. He too was often perplexed by the unusual things his son would do. evening, Al was very late for dinner. His father searched everywhere for him and finally decided to look in the neighbor's barn. Samuel Edison couldn't believe his eyes. There was Al, sitting on a nest of straw. sitting on some eggs. Why? What was the reason for this strange behavior? Could Al explain it? Well, he'd been observing the mother hens in the barn sitting on their eggs to hatch them. He was curious, he said, to see if he could hatch eggs by sitting on them. Al's father found it hard to understand his son's experiments. Perhaps young Alva would change when he started school. When Al was seven, the family moved to Port Huron, Michigan, near Detroit. The boy went to a nearby school for only three months. So his mother, who had been a school teacher, taught him at home. He and his mother read to each other from books in the family library. Al learned to read quickly. He had a very good memory and seldom forgot anything he read. His love of reading continued as the months and then the years went by. By the time Al was 13, 
He was reading all the books he could find. The corner of the cellar in the Port Huron home was his first laboratory. Here he spent many hours reading and experimenting. He was especially interested in books which contained scientific information. In a chapter about electricity, Al read, the simplest mode of exciting electricity is by friction. Always eager to find out for himself, he rubbed a glass rod with a silk cloth. He found that he did get an electric charge, which would attract certain things. Young Thomas Alva was learning by observing and trying things out. His mother was pleased with Alva's interest in learning, but she worried about the strange smells and noises coming from the cellar. The chemicals were messy, she thought, and dangerous. He'd have to get rid of them. But Al pleaded that he needed them for his experiments. Finally, his mother agreed that he could keep them, but he would have to make sure no one else would handle them. That was the problem. Now, how could he make sure no one else would touch the chemicals he valued so much? This is what he did. He labeled every bottle poison. Not too scientific, perhaps. But it was a practical way to keep others from disturbing the bottles. Just as he had solved this problem, Tom Edison would find practical ways to solve other problems many times throughout his life. As Tom continued with his experiments, he found he needed more and different chemicals. and chemicals were expensive. If Tom were going to buy what he needed to continue his experimenting, he would have to find a way to earn some money. On the local branch of the Grand Trunk Railway, Tom got a job as a newsboy. The train left Port Huron early in the morning, made several stops on the way to Detroit, and returned late at night to Port Huron. Tom made the round trip every day. He sold newspapers at each station and on the train. He also peddled candy, fruit, nuts, and eats to the passengers. Business was brisk, and Tom was soon earning enough to buy the books and chemicals he wanted. On the train, he had even found an ingenious way to carry on his experiments. He had gotten permission to set up a small laboratory in one corner of the baggage car. Here, when he wasn't working, he could follow his love of experimenting, which would become so important in his later life. Edison's endless curiosity led to other things. In the same baggage car, he set up a printing press he had bought secondhand. He began to print his own small newspaper. His news items were picked up from friendly telegraph operators in stations along the railroad. He taught himself to set type and operate the hand press. Tom Edison's Herald was the first newspaper ever published on a train.
In Detroit, Tom picked up his regular newspapers at the office of the Detroit Free Press. One day in April, 1862, during the Civil War, he saw a late news item. Tom realized at once that people all along the railroad would be eager to buy papers with news of the battle, if they only knew about it. Why, he could sell many times his usual number of papers. But how would he let people know? Tom got one of his telegraph operator friends to wire the headlines to stations along the railroad. First station, Tom found a crowd eager for further news of the battle. Another eager crowd met him at the next station. Tom took one look and raised the price of his papers. He raised them again at the next stop as his stock of papers diminished. By the end of the ride, Tom's papers were gone. And he had a handsome profit. He knew what he wanted to do with money. He would use it to learn to be a telegrapher. Tom had long been interested in the telegraph. Now, with instruction, he quickly learned this new skill. In a way, this work with the telegraph marked the beginning of Tom's manhood. His new skill was to take him away from home to many different places and new challenges. But throughout his life, he would never lose his boyhood traits of being curious, not giving up easily, learning through observation, and working out things in his own way. These traits helped to shape his career as one of America's greatest inventors. He invented hundreds of useful products. The marvelous phonograph, the radio microphone, the mimeograph. The Edison tube, which contributed to the development of radio and television. And the one invention that has probably done most to change the lives of people the world over. The electric light bulb. The invention and helped men overcome darkness. And so many of the inventions that we use and enjoy today are developments that originated in the mind of this man, Thomas Alva Edison, whose genius helped to create the modern world so different from the world of his boyhood.